A recent and surprising scientific discovery has momentarily shifted the narrative around the Antarctic ice sheet, and while the news brings a sense of cautious optimism, it also underscores how volatile and unpredictable our planet's climate systems remain. For the first time in decades, the Antarctic ice sheet, AIS, which has been a consistent contributor to global sea level rise, has registered a notable mass gain. Between 2021 and 2023, instead of continuing its downward spiral of ice loss, the AIS grew in size due to anomalous precipitation. Though this sounds like good news, it comes with serious caveats and a sobering reminder. Climate systems are not simply reversing, they are reacting chaotically. The long-term trend remains deeply concerning. This mass gain, detected through satellite gravimetry from the GRACE and GRACE-FO missions, offers a brief glimpse of what appears to be a climatic anomaly. For two decades, scientists have carefully tracked Antarctica's decline. From 2002 to 2010, the continent lost ice at an estimated rate of 74 gigatons per year. That number nearly doubled in the following decade, from 2011 to 2020, with an alarming loss rate of 142 gigatons annually, a change largely attributed to intensified melting in West Antarctica and unexpected instability in parts of East Antarctica. But then came a stark and rare deviation. During 2021 to 2023, the AIS gained ice mass at a rate of approximately 108 gigatons per year. Most notably, glaciers in the Wilkes Land, Queen Mary Land, WL, QML, region, including Totten, Moscow University, Denman, and Vincennes Bay, once among the fastest melting areas, began to gain ice instead of shedding it. For scientists, this wasn't just a numerical reversal, it was an unprecedented behavioral shift in ice dynamics that caught much of the scientific community off guard. The mechanism behind this reversal appears to be anomalous precipitation, an increase in snowfall and moisture that, at least temporarily, tipped the mass balance back into positive territory. In terms of global sea level, this shift has had a tangible, measurable effect. Instead of contributing to sea level rise, Antarctica briefly offset it by about 0.30 millimeters per year during this period. From a planetary perspective, that is not insignificant. However, this development should not be interpreted as a victory over climate change. The broader trend remains grim. What we're witnessing is not a sign of stabilization, but a temporary disturbance, a deviation that does not erase the record-breaking losses from prior decades. The ice sheet's sudden gain is precariously perched on weather variability, not structural improvement. The underlying forces driving long-term ice sheet decline, rising global temperatures, ocean heat uptake, and collapsing ice shelves remain unchecked and active. This rebound, as remarkable as it is, does not cancel out years of cumulative damage. There is also a dangerous temptation to misread this data point. Some may interpret it as evidence that Antarctica is recovering, that fears of sea level rise were overstated, or that climate alarmism has gone too far. But such conclusions would be not only scientifically inaccurate, but deeply irresponsible. The same study that identified the mass gain also reiterated that the complete collapse of just four of these glaciers could lead to a catastrophic sea level rise exceeding seven meters, a scenario that remains very much on the table should warming trends continue unchecked. Furthermore, the drivers of this mass gain, anomalous precipitation events, may themselves be the result of broader climate instability. The more erratic our planet's climate becomes, the more we may see unpredictable swings like this one. And while precipitation may boost ice mass in one region, it can also bring flooding, ice shelf destabilization, or shifting ocean currents elsewhere. One form of atmospheric chaos does not cancel out another. Still, this development does contain positive potential, not in the sense of reversal, but in our growing scientific understanding. The fact that satellite technology can now detect such nuanced changes in real time demonstrates the increasing precision of climate science. These advances in observation give humanity a sharper set of tools with which to interpret, respond to, and perhaps mitigate the effects of climate change. The rebound, while temporary, offers an invaluable natural experiment that can help us better model the thresholds of glacial response to precipitation, temperature, and oceanic changes. From a policy perspective, this could also be a crucial wake-up call. 
It highlights that we are not merely passive observers of a declining ice sheet, but potentially active stewards of its future. The ice gain did not result from deliberate intervention, but its existence raises the question, what would it take to tip this balance permanently? Could intentional, targeted efforts in climate management, atmospheric science, or oceanic circulation produce sustainable results that slow or reverse ice loss? In conclusion, while the Antarctic ice sheet's recent mass gain is an astonishing scientific development, it is not a sign that climate risk is disappearing, far from it. Rather, it is a sharp reminder that Earth systems are highly reactive and sensitive to both natural and anthropogenic forces. This is a temporary reprieve in a longer story that still trends toward danger. If anything, it should heighten our urgency, not diminish it. But at the same time, it offers a glimmer of possibility. It reminds us that Earth systems, though wounded, are still dynamic, and that with enough care, humility, and scientific effort, they may yet surprise us in ways that sustain rather than destroy.